Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a review show special. Now, I don't want to call this a review show special. It's something that a lot of people have asked me to review. I'm not going to call it a review show special, though. And one of the reasons I'm not going to call it a review show special is because today I'm going to be looking at decks by Lloyd Barnes and Javier Fuenmayer and recently just brought out through um, Murphy's Magic. And I wasn't going to review decks. And the reason I wasn't is because I knew that I would have certain people on the internet telling me that I'm biased and that uh, I, I shouldn't be reviewing uh, a product because Lloyd is a friend of mine. So I decided not to review it. And instead, earlier on, about a week or so ago, I did a Matt test where I was just performing some of the routines to Matt. Since then, however, uh, the whole situation with Dex has just gone to a complete other level. Um, and... Off the back of that, literally every single person under the sun has done a video talking about their views on this whole situation. Uh, you know, I've just recently listened to um, uh, Caven Booth's uh, video and, and, and Steve Faulkner's, and the list goes on and on and on. And I've had a lot of people say to me, what's my take on this? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my thoughts on Dex. It's not so much a review. I'm, I'm going to more give you my thoughts. Because the thing is, and, and look, take this for what it's worth. I'm going to try and be as ironically unbiased as I can. However, people that are watching this must know that I have had history with uh, David from Unbiased Magic Reviews. And I have had, you know, ever since you reviewed my Penguin Live about a year ago, uh, I, I, we've gone back and forth on various different things. And Lloyd's had issues with, uh, with David as well. And I know David's had issues with us. By the way, if I'm coughing, I'm very sorry. I'm not feeling great today. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try and be completely unbiased. But obviously, you have to be aware that I have got a history with David. And also that Lloyd is my best friend. But I have had literally hundreds of people asking for my take on this and, and posting comments going, hey, what's your thoughts on Dex? What's your thoughts on Dex? So I'm going to kind of make this video more about my thoughts um, on the whole situation and I think I understand why we got to where we are. And uh, I, I, I think I can offer some perspective, maybe. So before I start, look, if David is watching this, I have said this numerous times. I, I, I don't think we're ever going to be best friends by any stretch of the imagination. However, I have watched several things on your channel. And there's a lot of really good content. And it is obvious that you are very passionate about magic. That's something that comes across in spades. And, you know, if I've done anything in the past that's upset you, I'm very sorry about that. Um, that was never the intention. And uh, I, I just want you to know that anything that I say in this video isn't directed to you as a person in any way, shape or form. Uh, because I can see you're very passionate about magic. However, I can, I've got a kind of a unique perspective on this whole situation. Because I'm a reviewer and also I'm a creator. And I can't think of many people that review and create. Um, especially that review as many things as I do. Um, probably David Penn is the only other person I can think of. So I can kind of look at this from a creator's point of view, but I can also look at it from a reviewer's point of view. And that's what I'm going to do. But first of all, for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, the situation is this. David from Unbiased Magic Reviews gave a very negative review, um, a very, very negative review to Lloyd's decks and said several things about it that basically, in his opinion, made it completely... Um, unpurchasable and gave it a very low mark and said that uh, he's returning his he's getting a full refund uh, he wouldn't recommend anybody else buy this because it's not fit for purpose um, look a few days went by and then Lloyd did a video kind of like a rebuttal video because Lloyd looked at the review that uh, that David made and, and pointed out 10 lies, where in Lloyd's opinion, there were 10 different situations where Lloyd lied, uh, where, where, sorry, uh, in Lloyd's opinion, David lied uh, in his review. And uh, he was very meticulous and broke each one of these lies down and offered proof and offered um, evidence as to why he was saying this was a lie. And he went above and beyond to actually show that what David was saying wasn't true, including uh, posting the link to the full tutorial for Dex, 
which is nine hours long and telling everybody to watch it because he said if you watch this whether you own the product or not you'll see that a lot of what David is saying is not true so David then came back with another video and said uh, um, that Lloyd is basically um, at attacking his character uh, none of that is true. And he focused on one particular part. And one thing that Lloyd talked about in the review, uh, sorry, in the rebuttal video, one thing Lloyd talked about was uh, Christian Grace. Because a little bit before that, David from Unbiased Magic Reviews uh, did a video about Enigma. Now, it wasn't a review, but it was a video basically talking about why he wasn't going to get Enigma. And, uh, and and it was posted a couple of days before Enigma launched. And uh, and in this video, he said, hey, I'm not gonna buy Enigma. I've played around with a friend's copy of Enigma. This is why I'm not going to buy it. Now, I know Christian, and I know Christian was very, very upset about that review. Um, very upset, because it was just before the, the product got launched. And um, th th as well as that, obviously, he has a big, David has, you know, a, a certain amount of followers that listen to everything that he says. And you can see that because in that video from Unbiased Magic Reviews, uh, you can see people going, oh, I was considering buying this and now I'm not. I was considering buying this, now I'm not. So obviously Christian was very upset about it. And then Lloyd spoke about how Christian received emails from David at Unbiased Magic Reviews, um, apologizing for posting the video uh, went back and forth with Christian a couple of times and then said, hey, I'm going to make this right. I'm going to take the video down. And then never took the video down. David, from Unbiased Magic Reviews, in his rebuttal video to Lloyd, said that um, um, I never sent those, those emails and uh, this is fraudulent and I'm going to be taking this as far as I can and I can't believe that you would make up fraudulent emails to spin your own narrative and uh, and literally in every single comment has said uh, basically that same thing that Lloyd is disgusting for um, you know making up emails that he never sent um, in order to uh, basically make his point more robust. Since then we've had um, videos from almost every single magic YouTuber that you can possibly imagine. Every single person has given their two pence worth on the situation. And uh, now it's my turn. So here's my viewpoint on this. Um, I think that, uh, I think, I think that David is, and look, I'm not going to be wasting too much time on this in so far as I'm not going to be posting videos of what Lloyd said and videos of what uh, David said and videos of what Christian said, or I'm not going to be putting screenshots of messages or posts on, 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 the, uh, uh, on the screen. I just haven't got time for that. And as I said earlier, I'm not feeling very well. But um, I think there's a few things to, to think about with this. And the first thing, from a creator's point of view, and the reason that Lloyd probably made the video in the first place is because David can come across as very, very harsh. Now, that's nothing wrong with that, by the way. I come across as very harsh. You know, if you've seen some of my reviews, if I feel that a product is terrible, I've come across as very harsh as well. I think the difference is... David is, a, and again, I'm not, I, this is just my opinion based on my dealings with David. He comes across a lot of the time like a dog with a bone. And what I mean by that is he just won't let it go. My reviews, for example, when I review a product, if I've given it a negative review, I don't dwell on it. It got a negative review. Okay, fine. No problem. I won't then continue to twist the knife. At that point, it's anyone's opinion as to what they think of it. Anyone's opinion at all. If somebody comments and says, hey, I actually quite like this trick that you've just trashed. I'm like, okay, cool. Brilliant. That's your opinion. That's awesome. David is a lot... Of, uh, from, a, from a creator's point of view, one of the things that's irked me when David reviewed one of my products was that he just wouldn't let it go. So he reviewed my Penguin Live. I've got it up here. Uh... 
he reviewed my Penguin Live and he's made videos about me and we've gone back and forth. And one of the things that he says about me is that, uh, you know, I, I took his review negatively. I took his review negatively and I was very, very angry about it. But actually, that's not really the case. Because when his review went live, and it was, a, it was not a good review at all, you can go back and look at it. If you go and look in the comments, you'll see a comment from me. And it was the very first comment that I ever made on his channel. And the comment was, thanks for the review. I appreciate the time it must have taken to put this together. I'm sorry you weren't keen on the lecture, but thanks for sharing your thoughts. It's not my intention to try and convince you the material's good. It works for me, but that doesn't mean it's going to work for everyone. Just some notes on originality, as you called some of my routines, originality into question. And uh, I, I, he did. He, he said there was basically nothing original there. And he talked about, um, I, I did a pseudo pickpocketing routine and he said, hey, his friend had uh, spoken about something similar three months before. And I said, the wallet routine was first talked about over a year ago on a five by five on my channel. It went through the concept and encouraged people to try it. The earliest video I have on my channel of me performing it was from 2017. So if someone contacted you three months ago about the idea, it's probably based on one of my videos. The sponge bearings video uh, routine was first taught on my DVD split happens from early 2008, but it was published first in an ebook in 2005. I had to say that because he said it was a direct ripoff of a Jay Sankey trick that came out in 2008 at the same time as the DVD came out that was originally on, but three years after the ebook came out that I actually published it in. Um, uh, Invisible Cards Across was first published on a DVD called Roft in 2007. Um, which is predates what he was actually saying, because he went through every single one of my tricks, and he was like, hey, this is similar to this from this time, this is similar to this from this time. Um, and so I kind of went through, um, and I ended up by saying, look, I'm not here to argue, I really like the look of your channel, I wish you continued success with it, and I hope to continue. It's difficult being a magic reviewer, as I only know too well. You have a subscriber in me. Sorry you weren't happy with the project. I hope, I, uh, I hope anything I put out in the future is more to your liking. So I put a very respectful, even though he gave me a negative review, I put a very respectful post together for him. And he actually replied to that to his credit and said, thanks for the explanation and clarification. And then I was chatting with a couple of his commenters um, uh, uh, that were talking about my channel in particular. Um, and then he comes back on and says, I think you've completely missed the point of your review. Let me clarify with a direct example. The card to box effect, a very minor rehandling of James Brown's box clever. Exactly the same thing. The box goes under the, the deck goes under the box, blah, 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 blah. Um, instead of improving the effect, you have watered down the worst part and you're, pay and you're paying money for it. You see this as sorry you didn't like my lecture. No, it has nothing to do with liking something. It has everything to do with the offering and if the magic is worthy. Try to look at it from an objective perspective. I could go through more of these uh, routines and spend all day pointing out uh, this, but why? And the point I'm trying to make here, and if you go back and look at that review on my stuff, you'll see that a lot of the comments that he makes is really just telling me how terrible the product is. Even though I put a respectful reply on it and I said, hey, thanks for the review. You've got a subscriber. I'm sorry you didn't like the material. As a creator, that winds me up. And part of the reason I was so frustrated um, and this whole beef between me and David started is because I tried to do the right thing. I tried to reply and say, hey, thank you. I'm sorry you didn't like it. And it just got bad to worse and bad to worse and bad to worse. And um, it, it got to the point where I, I, I was just getting really frustrated with him when I just tried to cut it off. Now, I personally think as a reviewer, you should just review the product and then be done with it. Let everyone else make their own minds up. You've made your points. I disagree with your points. And I tried to raise those points in a very clear way. And still you went out and, and it almost comes across as character assassination a lot of the time. Um, it really does, uh, which is ironic as that's what you're saying that Lloyd's doing to you. Now, I'm not bringing this up from the past, you know, to be moany about it. I'm bringing this up from the past to say to you, I think, or to say to everybody that's watching this, I think the part of the problem is as a creator, you don't let things go. Um, you just don't. So you look at the, uh, the original review that you did of Lloyd's video. Whenever anybody went on there and said anything positive, you shot them down in flames. I mean, fine, you don't like decks. 
That's not a problem. That's your prerogative not to like death. Got your channel trailer playing there. Sorry about that. It's your prerogative not to like decks. That's absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. You want to not like decks, be right ahead. That's not why Lloyd made that review. He made that review because he felt that you lied about several points. And, and as well as that, you... you Look at the comments on the original review. Like, people are commenting on it. You made your review. You said why it wasn't very good. And then you're, you're leaving comments like... Um, uh, bah, 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 bah. You know, what's worse is stating that it's the world's fastest thing, index and the greatest of all time. As if... Um, you know... Um, bah, 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 bah. Then somebody, then you, you make another comment here. Dex is complete rubbish. Last year, I pointed out to Lloyd that he should use a random car generator instead of his wife in a basement video and make it look like the video in one take rather than edited shots. He immediately removed me from my channel and I have the screenshots to prove it. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. I could keep going on, but this isn't the point. Um, it's not just at the bottom. It's coming unglued all over the gaps. There's a bunch of... You know, oh, this index is so much better. This index is so much better. And then um, and then somebody says they do explain how to use the ACES in the instructions. And he says, right, then mention the explanation that they don't use the ACES. Very poorly thought out. What were they doing for the past year or two? Just making basement hype videos. Like, this does not come across as unbiased. And then he's saying, hey, you don't need this. You could do something else. You could do something else. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and then you, you make a point here, um, you know, Lloyd is an employee of Murphy's Magic, most of these well-known magicians are employees of big magic companies, that's why it's laughable to see magicians who work for a magic company put out reviews of magic that's been sold for said company, they're all compromised, completely biased, you see magicians churning out advertisements on daily on YouTube, we'll get to that in a minute, but the point is, one of the reasons that I think Lloyd and other creators have an issue with you and other creators do have an issue with you. James Brown has an issue with you. Go check his Facebook page. Louis Lavelle has an issue with you. Go check his Facebook page. I have an issue with you. And it's not because you're not a nice person, but it's because it's almost you come across as biased because you just don't let it go. You don't just review the product and then you're done with it. You review the product, but then you twist the knife and you carry on twisting and you carry on twisting. And it makes you look not objective. And, and that, for me, is one of the biggest bugbears. And, and you don't let it go. Now, the other thing that you do is um, you have a habit of um, doing videos or making comments on tricks that you don't own. And and the perfect example is, is, you know, I mean, I've had it happen. You know, when Lucky Lotto came out through Penguin Magic, it went on to about 20 or 30 pages on the Magic Cafe because the, the trailer went out and you immediately jumped on there and argued back and forth with me over and over again that Lucky Lotto was, was fake. You know, that the, the trailer was uh, dishonest because of one little point that you perceived to be an issue. So I then took that and I re-recorded a full video a full performance video of the other routine and I got Penguin to put it up on the ad page for the trick. And even then you weren't happy with that. You can see that it's still there on the Magic Cafe. And you see it again with Christian, you know, going and, and you don't own Lucky Lotto. It was the same with the Dex review, you know, in the Dex review, you made a little comment, didn't you? It's like, oh, there's other routines like with EDC, but that's terrible. Nobody would buy that. That's the worst trick ever. Well, it's, it's not, it's had great reviews. You don't own it. And yet there you are as a reviewer, not owning it, but telling your audience that it's a terrible trick and an offhanded comment on a review of another product. Don't you see why that's an issue if you want to be considered impartial and biased? And biased? It's the same as um, the Christian thing. Forget about the emails for a minute. Forget about them. Just the fact that you put a video up a couple of days before the launch of his app, telling everybody why you won't buy Enigma, that's just not fair. That's just, it's just not right at all. I'm, I'm sorry, that's my opinion. 
but as a magic reviewer, you can't review stuff if you don't own it. And I know you're going to say, well, it's not a review. But look at the comments on that video that you made about Enigma. Look at the amount of people that went on there and said, you're right, I'm not going to buy it. You're right, I'm not going to buy it. You're right, I'm not going to buy it. If you've got an opinion about something and you're a reviewer, go buy the trick and then put an actual review out or change the name of your channel to unbiased magic reviews and opinions and thoughts. Because... What you did there is you put a review online and Lloyd, Lloyd said this in his, his, in his video and I think he made a very good point here, which was um, um, he spoke about um, uh, the, the review and it's like, you know, would you see a film reviewer reviewing a film that they hadn't seen and instead somebody had told it about it, told them about it? Probably not. You wouldn't see that. I, I think that that was wrong and I know that it upset Christian. Um, and, and Christian was really upset about it. I know how much money and time and effort he's put into um, creating this product and launching it. And for you to put a video up like that two days beforehand. And that's what makes me think that you didn't send the emails. I, and we'll get to the email thing in a minute. But what makes me think that you didn't send the emails is because any dealings I've got you, uh, from you as a person, you would never apologize to somebody. You would never admit that you're wrong, ever. You would never t email somebody and tell them, actually, I'm wrong. I didn't do that. You just wouldn't do that. You're not that sort of person. You're the sort of person that would dig your heels in and, and, and double down on your opinion as opposed to going in a different direction. Um, so as a creator, and I'm trying to explain to you, without, and I'm, I'm not making anything personal here. If I am, I'm very sorry. I'm trying to explain to you from my dealings with you and what I see, why as a creator you can be upset with with what you do and I know your attitude is I'm not paid to be a reviewer I'm not a stooge and blah 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 and so on and so forth and I get that but you kind of go above and beyond you go you go further than you need to if you want to leave a review and just trash the product that's fine but there's no need to twist the knife in the comments there's no need to continue with that narrative um I, I just don't think that's fair it's um the perfect example for me, and I think Lloyd mentioned this in his video as well, is that when you uh, when you did the Dex review, in a nine-hour video tutorial, there's one moment where Lloyd pulled out the wrong card, and he did it as a uh, you know he he was he hadn't reset his index. It was part of a much longer video. He got the wrong card. I think he hadn't reset it. He, he was tired. Uh, he could have very easily edited that out. He chose not to. He chose to keep it in. And you pulled that out of the tutorial, that particular moment. You took it completely out of context and used it as proof in the video and then referred to it later on in comments over other videos why this proves that the index is so bad because, because you can't get the right card? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Right. That's, that's the first thing. Now, the second thing is, as a reviewer, at least I personally think so, you wind reviewers up the wrong way. And again, I know you're going to sit there and say, I don't care. I'm the only unbiased reviewer in magic and everyone else has an agenda. And you say that for a few different reasons. And, you know, that, that um, comment that I just read out is something that you say all the time. Most of these well-known magicians are employees of big magic companies. That's why it's laughable to see magicians who work for magic companies put out reviews for magic that's being sold by said company. They're all compromised, completely biased. You see magicians churning out advertisements daily on YouTube. Um, I talked about this on a video I did a little while ago. You, you've, you've called people out as saying, hey, they're paid stooges and they get paid for leaving reviews. And, um, you know, they're just completely biased. And you're the only non-biased reviewer there is. You're winding up every other reviewer on YouTube by saying that. You get that, right? Like you're winding up every other reviewer on YouTube. I know a lot of the time when you're saying stuff like that, you might not specifically mention my name, but I know that a lot of the time you're talking about me because I do work for World Magic. Uh, not World Magic. I do work for Murphy's uh, releasing tricks. I just bought out Cube 52 through Murphy's. I'm bringing another trick out later this year through Murphy's. Um, I do. It doesn't make me biased. They don't send me anything for free. 
And if you want proof of that, go look at the video I put up a few days ago, debunking lies about Craig Petty. I actually posted up on that video the amount that I spend on magic for this review channel every year. I spend somewhere between 150 and 250,000 pounds a year on magic, most of which just ends up in a bottom drawer, a warehouse or a bin. But still I'm compromised because I work for Murphy's Magic, even though I spend that much money. Even though I've reviewed stuff that Murphy's have bought out and I've given it a bad review, I'm compromised. <sighs> to listen to you, every reviewer on the internet is biased. But the thing is, and you use that narrative all the time, don't you? If you've been given a free copy of this trick, then you are biased. That's not true. By saying, you know, there's a lot of reviewers that review stuff online that maybe haven't got that much money. And they haven't got the money to buy all of the tricks all of the time, but they still want to do reviews and their opinion's valid. So a lot of the time, creators will send free product out to review channels to review it in return for a review. Not a paid review, but in return for a review. And, you know, Steve Faulkner gets lots of stuff for free. Do you think Steve is a un, is a biased magic reviewer because he gets stuff for free? Do you think David from Magic Orthodoxy is a biased reviewer? That's just ridiculous. You can get a product for free and still give it your opinion. You don't... Now, the two aren't mutually exclusive. You're not automatically going to be biased because you've been sent a copy of a trick for free. Look at my review that I put up a little while ago from TCC. I opened the review by saying, I've been sent this stuff by TCC. They sent it me for free. They contacted me and said, would you please review this stuff? And I said, yes. And I reviewed four items and one of them got a bad review because I didn't think it was very good, even though they sent it me for free. Um, I just think it's disrespectful that you spin that narrative that every reviewer is compromised because they get a free item. They're not. You're going to get their honest opinion. B bias takes, th th there's so many different ways of being biased. I honestly think that you're biased because you have certain, because you're so knowledgeable and you, you know an awful lot, uh, it, you can almost see any trick and compare it to something that came out years ago. And you don't see how it's gone from X to Y to Z. Um, you're, you're biased in terms of your opinions on certain things. You know, you just are. It's obvious to me that you're biased. You don't like me. You don't like Lloyd. You know, you make, with regards to me, you make those little affine comments about ED seats. You know, that's bias. You don't like me. And you know what? Cube 52 came out recently. And um, I don't think I've seen a negative review for Cube 52. And guess what? You haven't even talked about it because you know it's very, very difficult to spin a negative review on that product. You come across as very biased. Maybe not in terms of having stuff sent to you for free, but there's more than one way to be biased. And you do come across as a biased reviewer. And you also come across as somebody who winds other reviewers up. I have spoken to other reviewers online and they are really, really fed up of the fact that you spin this narrative that the only person in magic that can be trusted is you. That's simply not the case. I don't understand why you do that. It's, you know, this whole getting stuff for free makes you biased thing. Any, let's go back to the film reviewer analogy. Any film reviewer will probably have been given a ticket to the premiere to watch the film for free. They still are more than happy to leave a negative review for a film online if they don't like it. They don't necessarily have to go and buy a ticket to go and watch that film in order to leave an honest opinion when they leave a review. So why automatically do you assume that if somebody has been sent something for free, they are automatically biased? Because that just simply isn't true. I think you're a nice guy. I think I'd probably get on with you, to be honest, if we had a drink with each other. I've said that before. And I've got an open invitation for you now. Um, I would, and I've said this before, and you've not took me off in the offer, so I'm going to say it again. I'd happily jump on a Zoom call with you and have a chat and have a conversation. Because I think we've probably got more in common than you'd think. I'm not saying we film it and put it on online or your, your channel or my channel. Let's just see if we can jump on a call together and find some common ground. 
because there's a lot that you do in this industry that's good. Hey, everybody's flawed, by the way. I'm saying, hey, you you do come across in biased in certain ways and, and hey, you're like a dog with a bone when it comes to creators. Hey, I've got more flaws than anybody and I'm more than happy to admit it. I've got way more flaws than probably most people in this industry. Um, I'd love to have a chat with you and just find some common ground. I really would. If that's something that you would want to do, let me know. You've got my email address. Hook me up. But um, we have to talk about the emails, right? So we have to talk about the emails. Uh, here's the thing. In your uh, video, uh, and I'll bring it up here just so I know what I'm talking about. So in your rebuttal video to Lloyd, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to say I'm not very well right now. In your rebuttal video to Lloyd, which I have here, and by the way, just as a little side point, Lloyd never um, uh, made anything personal with you. He said that you lied, but that was from his opinion. He made, he brought evidence up that he felt that you were lying. He, he posted a couple of your videos of you not doing the best performance, but I don't think that was intended to make you look bad, it was intended to prove his point. I think everything in Lloyd's video was designed to, you know, like put his point of view across on the review that you made. Just the thumbnail that you put on that channel, on that channel video, the thumbnail you put of Lloyd years ago, much fatter than he is now, just shows what you were trying to achieve with that video. Right from the thumbnail, it shows that you wanted to make him look bad, you wanted to discredit him, it's just obvious. It really is. So let's have a look at this. So you, you're, you, you've put this uh, rebuttal video together. And what you're doing that and yet, yet, look, let's not even getting into the, uh, the the exposure on YouTube thing, because I've talked about that. I, I have completely different views to you on exposure on YouTube. Um, you're talking a lot about Don Juan. Uh, and that he would smoke, uh, he would smoke Lloyd, which is just an example that you're, um, you're very, very biased. I've got to be honest. You can just tell on this issue. Um, but when it comes to um, when it comes to the email situation, almost every comment is is about how Lloyd is assassinating your character and making up. Uh, uh, presenting fake emails as a statement of fact is fraud. Christian Grace is just as cullable as he continues to promote this fake and false narrative. You can voice your opinion regarding anything you want, but when you present a document as a statement of fact without verification, and that tarnishes someone's reputation, that is indeed defamation of character. Um, Lloyd Barnes and Christian Grace made the ridiculous moronic assumption that I wrote those emails. Barnes didn't even have enough common sense to actually confirm it was real before slandering me and posting that in his video. It shows you how desperate they are to discredit me. Ask them to reveal the metadata to those emails. Uh, the duty to prove those emails came from me rest on Lloyd Barnes and Christian Grace, both who claim I wrote a uh, preposterous suggestion shows how daft they both are. And, and, and almost every comment that you make is, is, about, uh, is about that sort of thing. You know, it goes on and on and on. I don't know who fabricated those emails, but they weren't even done well. I don't know if those responses were even from Christian or if he is included in this forgery. I have not had any communication with Christian Grace. Why did Lloyd Barnes block out the emails? What is he hiding? Keep in mind my video was never... Right, okay. So basically he's saying that Lloyd was the one that created those emails in order to assassinate your character, right? Character defamation, that's what you're saying. Um, I disagree. And I'll tell you why I disagree. I had a look at those emails on the video. And I think the reason that the email address was blocked out was because, you know, it came from a private email address. You know, he didn't want to display that email address um, on, on the screen. Um, so I think that's probably the reason. That's why a lot of the time when emails are put up online, things are blocked out. I reckon that's the reason. Uh, so I don't think, you know, when you're talking about why did Lloyd Barnes block out the emails, I think that's the reason, to be perfectly honest. Um, in terms of the actual emails themselves, they were dated on the 8th of September. Um, th 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 which is way before your review of Dex came out, right? Like way before 
your review of Dex came out, like, massively before. So, like, because of that, I can't see that they were created because of the Dex review. I don't think that's the case. And I'm pretty sure, I'm positive that Lloyd and Christian did not fake those emails. But that's the narrative you're pushing. You're saying, hey, you're, you're not even saying that, you're not even questioning, well, who did it? In every comment, in everything that you're saying, you're, you're basically putting across, um, you know, Lloyd's definitely fraudulent, uh, created fraudulent emails, and Christian might be involved in this as well. Every other point that Lloyd made in that video, he presented facts. You said that you couldn't use the ACES in the index, and he showed that you could. Um, he, he, everything, absolutely everything. And by the way, my deck isn't falling apart at all. It's coming in glued at the bottom, but that's totally not an issue. Um, but, um, yeah, I, look, I, I, Lloyd and Christian, surely they, like you say that the onus is on them to prove that those emails are, are real. Why would they not think they're real? It came from you. It was about your, pro people, they went back and forth with Christian a few times. Um, I don't, and I don't see what, the, the, I don't see what they would gain out of creating these fake emails. I, I really don't. I don't think that they have created fake emails. I don't think Lloyd's created fake emails. I don't think Christian's created fake emails. I don't think that's the case at all. I think that somebody probably has it in for you. And they're trying to cause trouble between you and Christian. How could they have even known that Lloyd would have got involved in this? Because Lloyd, you know, because the emails were sent to Christian, not to Lloyd, before the Dex review even came out, like way before the Dex review came out, the, the emails were sent between you <coughs> and, um, and, and Christian. Lloyd then got involved a little bit later on. Um, he was talking to Christian and the subject of the emails came up and then they got used in the actual video. But from my side, I, I think it's just someone that's messing with you for some reason. I, and I don't know why, but I think it's somebody else that's created these emails. And, and then Lloyd, Lloyd and Christian have said, hey, Christian's obviously upset. You could tell from the emails that Christian sent back to this person that the that he's upset you can tell he's upset and and that's one of the things i, I don't understand why have you have it's your right to not pull the video but i don't know why you haven't pulled it when you can see just how upset christian is about this whole thing he's offered to send you a free copy of the thing when well, you don't accept free copies but he's offered you know he's offered and 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 the fact that you haven't pulled it whatever i think that that's a mistake david i really do and I'm rambling now, I'm rambling, but uh, you know, th th the one point I'll make about that is that in your video, you talked, I spoke to uh, Lloyd on the podcast about this actually, um, in your video, you pulled up the emails and you said, hey, that looks like Spanish, it looks like it's some Spanish, which kind of is a little bit weird because on your LinkedIn profile, you're, you're, you speak native Spanish, um, and, and and when you were doing that video, hey, this looks like it's Spanish. Surely if you speak native Spanish, you would know that that's Spanish and you'd know exactly what it said. I don't know why you kind of said that in your review. Look, <coughs> in your rebuttal video, look, uh, here's the thing. I think this has got completely out of hand. And this is from somebody who has been involved in his fair share of controversy over the years. I think that, Honestly, if I were you, I would, and Caven Booth, if you haven't watched Caven's uh, video, please go and watch it because he actually sums this up perfectly. I, I think that um, somewhere along the lines, the reason that you were doing reviews has changed and I think you need to go back to basics. I think that you have become, or, well, your T-shirt said it all, untouchable or unstoppable or whatever your T-shirt said. I think you've got yourself into a, a, you kind of almost like have developed this superhero persona around you. Like you are bulletproof. Like you are this review. You are the only true and honest reviewer in an industry full of false statements and inaccurate reviews and lies and, and, and biased uh, opinions. You are the only person that's completely honest. And so I think a lot of the time 
you look for something that you can be negative about. I knew that you would be negative about Dex from the second that it came out. I knew that you would leave a negative review and you would be biased. I knew that you would. The irony is that you call your channel Unbiased Magic Reviews and yet you do come across as very biased. However, having said that, I do think your channel offers a lot of value. And I think if you went back to basics and you have a look at some of the reviews that you did a while ago and you try to kind of, because your, your five best thing videos are great, you know, fire, you know, the five best this, the five best that. You've got some incredible content on your channel. You really have. And um, I think you'd have far more subscribers if you just dialed back the other stuff. Uh, you know, I've stopped doing rants on my channel for that very same reason. We have to evolve. If we don't evolve, then, you know, we're going to stand still. We have to move forward, right? Uh, that's just my opinion. Look, I'm not feeling very well today, and I'm probably rambling a little bit more than I normally would. But my opinion on this whole situation, to sum it up, is from a reviewer's point of view, I think you wind other reviewers up with your attitude that you're the only unbiased magic reviewer on the uh, in the industry. From a creator's point of view, I think you wind creators up because you, I, I think, sometimes look for the negative instead of the positive. You say things sometimes to sensationalize them so that, um, you know, they, they come across as worse than they actually are. Even when challenged with proof to the contrary, like I did with my review of Your Penguin Live and like Lloyd did on Dex, you double down and you disagree and you go on the offense. Um, and I think that... Uh, it's frustrating for creators that you keep twisting the knife and you don't drop it and it's never just a review for you. It's going to be a review and an argument going on forever, which is why I think you have so many people that are so vocal on your, um, uh, the comments, the comments on your channel. Uh, the people who comment a lot of the time, they're very passionate about how, um, you know, you're the best person in the world and everybody else sucks and you're the only positive reviewer and you know you even <coughs> had to shut down negative comments about me on your review of my penguin live because you had people insulting me you had people calling me every name under the sun and i think that your style and the way that you review brings the type of people to your channel that are just very angry with this industry and, and you just have to look at the type of people that comment. Not everybody. There's some great people that comment on your, uh, your, your reviews. But I think the, that there's a certain percentage of people that are just very angry with the industry. And I think that comes about as a result of the type of stuff that you put on there. And I did that. As I say, I did that. I used to do rants. And then I do positive videos. And I, I couldn't understand why people didn't like my channel. But it's because they were looking at the rants and they weren't looking at the positive stuff. And when I stopped doing the rants and I started doing more videos that are positive and videos like this, where I'm very calm and cool and I'm just giving my opinion, um, that's when things started to change for my channel. So take the, you know, take the advice as you see fit. I'm not trying to slag you off, David. I think that you are obviously very passionate about what you do. And I know how hard a work it is to develop a YouTube channel. <coughs> Sorry. I just, um, yeah, take the advice for what it's worth. In terms of decks... Um, like I said, I'm not going to give it a review. If you want to see the mat test, go back and look at the mat test. I did a, uh, a mat test on it where I performed some of the routines because I have been gigging this. I'm going to do a review show revisited on it soon. I'm going to get some real life performances of me doing this in the real world. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very good. Does it fall apart at the bottom and does it come unglued? Yes. Will an elastic band fix it? Yes. In my opinion, can you use it with aces in there? Yes. Do I use aces in there? No. Why? Because I couldn't care less about the aces. I do agree with what Lloyd said. Lloyd's, uh, Lloyd and Javier said that the aces aren't being used in there. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Lloyd and Javier said that the aces aren't used in there because... Um, they just don't like it when people name aces because then somebody will go, oh, everyone names that one. So it, that's, uh, and I agree. So when I have them name a card, I go, name a card, not an ace, everyone picks aces. Um, a lot of the points that you made, in my opinion, it's only my opinion, in my opinion, I disagree with. I don't think the quality is an issue. Now, maybe you had one that was um, defaulted. 
um, and, and, and it did fall apart, in which case, yeah, totally understand. But if you contact a magic shop and that you'd have them send another one through to you, they probably would have. Because I know people that have been using decks from launch every day and it's not falling apart. They've got a rubber band around it, like the tutorial says, and it's absolutely fine. Um, not an issue. So um, I, I don't think the quality thing is an issue. I think that the tutorials are amazing. There are definitely more than four routines taught. Um, there's some amazing stuff that's been taught. Jake's um, routine with the envelopes is just, is just incredible. That's one of my favorite uses for decks. I've just ordered a second decks, by the way, and the reason is I want to do the ED seat routine. I really want to do the ED seat routine because I do ED seat all the time, um, even though... According to you, David, it's the worst trick in the world and nobody would do it. Um, I want to do that. I think that that's killer. Um, so, yeah, I love decks. You know, I'm giving it 100%. I think it's amazing. Here's the thing. If anybody has got to this point in the video and you want some advice, this is my advice. When you're looking for a review of a trick, understand that every single reviewer is biased. Whether they say they're biased or not, they are. And sometimes you can't help yourself. Look at me. I'm biased. Um, I just automatically assume that everything that I get from Alakazam is going to be good. Because I've never had a bad Alakazam trick. I just assume that everything from Peter Egging is going to be bad. Because I've never seen a good Peter Egging trick recently. So when I open up a trick and it's by Alakazam or, or, or Peng, um, uh, Peter Egging, I have preconceived ideas of what it's going to be like going into it. One of my best friends in the world is Lloyd Barnes. Of course, I'm going to have a certain amount of bias when it comes to that. So I'm biased. But other people are going to be biased as well. Everybody's biased. Every reviewer is biased because they have certain magic that they like to do. They have certain magic that they don't like to do. They have certain things that are important to them and not important to others. David, for example, is a hobbyist. He performs, but he performs to his patients. So things that are important to me when I review tricks as a working pro might not necessarily be important to David. When I go out and look at a trick, a lot of the time... If it's not going to be reset immediately, if it doesn't, if it requires like me to sit down at a table, if it requires a really long reset or something like that, I'm going to knock marks off it. Ryland, as a reviewer, he does an awful lot of stuff on social media. If he sees a trick and he thinks he can make it work on social media, he's probably going to give it a better review than I would because I'm never going to be able to use that trick. Uh, you know, D David, I think he is biased against me and Lloyd and other people in this industry as well. He's also, like I said before, because he's got such a strong knowledge base, if a trick comes out, he's going to know five or six other tricks that he considers to be better than that trick that are available. Whilst I personally think that you look at every trick on its own merits a lot of the time. Um, every reviewer has a certain amount of bias. So when you understand that... What you need to do is you need to look at everybody's reviews. Don't look at one person's review. Look at David from Magic Orthodoxy. Look at uh, Gareth from Mentalist on a Shoestring. Look at um, Tyler Lunsford from, uh, from Tyler Lunsford. Go look at Michael O'Brien. Go look at uh, Steve Faulkner. Go look at uh, the Wizard Product Review, David Penn, Sean Hayden, Wayne Fox, uh, Paul Longhurst. Go look at those guys. Go and look at absolutely everybody. Don't look at one review. Look at everybody's reviews. And then go and look at some reviews on the internet. Go and look at some reviews on the Magic Cafe. Go and look at some reviews on Facebook forums. Go and look at the reviews on the product page. Even if you don't buy from somewhere like Penguin, go and look at what the reviews are on Penguin before you buy it from your favourite magic shop. Go and look at all of those reviews and then make a decision. Because you're never going to get reviewers agreeing with each other. I've just given Dex a really good review. I've seen Tyler Lunsford give Dex a really good review, and I've seen other people give Dex really good reviews. Blake gave a review, a, a really good review. I've seen really good reviews on, um, on Penguin, but then I've seen the negative reviews on Penguin. I've seen negative reviews from... Um, David from Magic Orthodoxy, uh, not <laughs> from Unbiased Magic Reviews. So go look at all of the reviews and then listen to what they say, and then make an informed decision. Don't just go and rush into buying a trick um, based on one review. Don't go and watch David and Unbiased Magic Reviews, and he says it's the worst thing in the world, and you just go, right, I'm not going to buy it because it's the worst thing in the world, especially if he hasn't even bought the trick in the first place. <coughs> go and watch David, then go and watch somebody else. Then go and watch somebody else, then go and watch somebody else. 
and see what their points are and then make a decision. Honestly, if you're wanting to get an honest review of a magic product, that's what I would do. Don't just watch me. Don't just watch David. Go watch everybody. So there you go. Like I said, I'm not very well today. I'm very sorry uh, if it's a little bit more rambly than normal. I'm now going to bed, but I knew I needed this video to be put up. It's Friday and it had to be up on Sunday, so now it can be edited. Um, thanks very much for watching. We've got some great stuff over the weekend, uh, some really good stuff. I've got an interview with uh, Preston Nyman on Saturday talking about the London Magic Convention. Uh, oh, no, this would have gone out on Sunday. That's just happened. We've got... We've had some great stuff over the weekend. I'm really not well. So go check that out. If you haven't already done so, check out The Net Tricks, www.thenettricks.com. I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.